Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Digital Twin Theory, a podcast about the future of healthcare, produced by the Virtual Physiological Human Institute. I am Davide Montesarchio, your friendly neighbor host, and today we will talk about data. You know, we use and produce data in every moment, even during the recording of this podcast or while you are listening to it. But that's okay. Data are just part of our lives, and they will be more and more important as they are the cornerstone of in silico medicine. Before I present you the guest of this episode, don't forget to follow this podcast on Spotify and the BPHI on Instagram, LinkedIn, and X. So, let's get started. Our guest for today is Elisabetta Biasin, doctoral researcher at the Center for IT and IP Law at KU Leuven in Belgium. Good morning, Elisabetta. Good morning, Davide. Thank you for having me. So, Elisabetta, especially in recent years, we have heard a lot about GDPR, but what changes when we talk about medical data? Yes, we heard a lot about the GDPR, which stands for General Data Protection Regulation. It's a kind of regulation that applies for different kinds of processing of personal data. But with medical data, there are some specific and enhanced protections. For example, you go to an hospital and you provide data about your specific symptoms or conditions, or your patient file at your practitioner can be considered as medical data. Or if you're using an app and this app has, for example, medical purposes, this also can be considered as medical data. What changes is the fact that there are enhanced protections for medical data, which are considered as special categories of personal data. Let us think of uh, patients. They are often in vulnerable positions and uh, the stakes are high. For example, if you have unlawful access to specific uh, medical data or if there is a data breach. So the GDPR gives enhanced protection and establishes specific grants for their processing. So there is more protection Speaking from the medical side, are there any precautions to take when collecting or annotating data? Yes, there are some precautions that could be taken into account. There are especially both ethical and legal aspects that uh, may be relevant. First of all, it's important to consider that collecting data entails the processing of personal data. And following data protection requirements, it means that there are some aspects that needs to be considered. One I think that is really important is patient information. So patients really need to be informed about how and where and when data will be processed following specific requirements provided by the GDPR. But also it's important to let them know if data are used for research purposes and I'm thinking about, for example, when some data are used in a specific uh, research project to develop uh, some kinds of technologies. And there are also many uh, principles for seeing the GDPRs, and um, one of which is data minimization. So basically, when you collect data, make sure that you're collecting the only data that uh, is useful for your research project uh, or in general for the purposes in uh, healthcare that you are specifically addressing, which is a bit complicated in healthcare settings because sometimes you really need a lot of data to understand the situation better. And finally, for annotation, I think it's really important also to pay attention to accuracy of data and annotated data because annotated data can serve doctors and patients decision making but if the data is inaccurate then there could be some problems and it's worth to note that also the GDPR sets specific requirements for accuracy of personal data and health annotated data. And what about the security? Medical data are sensitive and privacy of course is paramount. Yeah, security is another important aspect and uh, in the last year we have seen a growing interest and concern about security of personal data, medical data and in general all data because there are several security risks that could be entailed. After COVID-19 especially, there were several cases such as cyber attacks like the, the WannaCry that really created disruptions. Or if we think about, for example, the EMA data breach, there have been several cases where the cyber attacks had important effects on healthcare infrastructures. And 
yeah, security of data are regulated from a legal perspective, especially by the NIS directive, which is about network information security and the GDPR. And they have uh, security requirements. One of the most important is uh, notify when you have a data breach, because you can have reputational damages for patients that, uh, for example, that could uh, feel psychologically unsafe to other people know about their condition. Or even if you cannot access data, this is a real problem in healthcare settings. If you need to operate a patient to make a decision at a critical time and you don't have the data because they are unavailable following a cyber attack, this is a really <laughs> a crucial uh, point. So security is really important and uh, indeed security practices from personal to organizational ones to legal ones are pivotal. How European institutions, or in general also the research, is working on providing the legal changes that make people feel more safe? For in other words, are there any foreseeable changes in the regulation of medical data in the future? Yes, there are. Especially this year, we have been hearing a lot about the so-called European Health Data Space Regulation which is part of a broader strategy by the European Union's institutions on how to regulate data. And it follows the already existing data legislations, for example, the GDPR, but also other kinds of legislations that were already there. And the European Health Data Space is one of the first to regulate so-called data space. And I think it would change the legal framework of data processing in healthcare as we know it, because it introduces new rules for the primary and secondary use of health data, which means that if you have already your data and you want to reuse it for other purposes, for example, for research, it establishes new requirements, it establishes new entities, new authorities, and it seems to have some many new benefits for health research and it may also be beneficial for patients as it establishes an expense on the rights that are foreseen by the GDPR. For example, expense on data portability so patients could be facilitated in uh, have their data transmitted to other places. The regulation is not adopted yet uh, in its final version, so there are still a couple of things to happen. I would say we are almost there. And uh, there were some points discussed, such as, for example, opt-out, and uh, for example, also some medical professionals said feasibility seems a bit tricky. But besides the, the critical points that, of course, we will have to follow up, I think this regulation is marking a turning point in EU law for health data. Medical data are important not only for ourselves, but it can also improve healthcare for many other people. So, how can this happen without compromising privacy? Yeah, indeed, medical data are a really important concern, especially with health research. We cannot uh, imagine research without without data, and therefore medical research without uh, medical data. But at the same time, it's really important to consider how these data are used and in as much as possible apply security and privacy enhancing technology to make sure that the data and the persons whose data are related to can be protected as much as possible. So one of the most important aspects is pseudonymization and data minimization which are essential in healthcare settings. And uh, also one aspect is always to have uh, security practices within healthcare infrastructures and it helps also to have uh, training and digital health literacy in uh, using health data, both for example, during specific uh, practices or in uh, building specific apps. It's really important to know what are security and privacy requirements. And at the same time, I think that uh, there's always a kind of narrative about uh, privacy and uh, some other things that might be diminished because of privacy. But in the end, I think that uh, we shouldn't see it like a, a huge dichotomy between privacy and something else. And sometimes privacy really helps saving and helping other values that are really important in healthcare settings. And I think it's also not only important to be careful when doing healthcare research and using data to understand what to do with security and privacy, but also understanding how scientific practices are beneficial for patients and the community. Balancing privacy and research and advancement in biomedical technology or clinical practice might be difficult. So how you find the real balance between 
those two very important factors. Yes, indeed, these are two very important factors. And the more I speak with healthcare practitioners and the more I speak with DPOs, etc., the more I see there is a huge concern. But ultimately, the concern of them is all about uh, ensuring and research to go forward and advance findings and um, improve the quality of life of, uh, of individuals. And uh, especially, I think that uh, there are some contexts that uh, make uh, or have made research a little bit more challenging. And since we are talking about, in general, EU law, it's also worth mentioning that health law and specifically the processing of health data uh, for research purposes have specific exemptions and further requirements by national legislations. And therefore, it's really why there are different uh, situations in different uh, member states and also more and more requirements. But indeed, I think it's a balance. There is no, let's say, one solution, but it always requires healthcare infrastructures, DPO and uh, researchers to come together and try to find the, the most appropriate uh, solutions to do that. And besides that, of course, all the security, pseudonymization and privacy enhancing technologies to be used as much as possible. I also checked your uh, papers and I saw that you published two very interesting works about fertility and menstruation tracking apps. So what are the risks to consider when providing our own data to health-related apps? There are indeed, as always, benefits and risks to provide data to specific apps for specific purposes. In the last years, I researched with my colleagues Anastasia Siapka legal and social ethical considerations for using fertility and menstruation tracking apps. And the topic became quite important after the US Road versus Wade overturn. Although it, I think it was even before very important, but the public discussion was more heated after that. And there are many risks in our opinion, such as they are related to privacy and other protection, but also security, as we discussed before. There are also apps, so there are some aspects concerning consumer protection, safety and medical reliability. And in some cases, since it's also a gender related aspect, uh, also cases of discrimination, because uh, not in Europe, but in other settings, such as in the US, there were cases where this app was used in uh, some workplace settings to have employees providing those data. And we suggest to consider that this app may bleed an excessive array of personal data. It's really important to consider transparency and all the things that the data are there shared, security, and also the reliability of those predictions. There were cases in the past where these apps were not really functioning properly and there were some person that sued the app manufacturer because of that. And of course, discrimination vulnerability. So what we suggest is not to say, oh my God, I will never do that. It's just to be aware there are risks and uh, try as much as possible if you want to use these apps to consider the privacy configuration and be more critical about it. It's always important to think for every app in health and not health, where the data goes, who uses it, if there is a health interest or economic interest, if it's reliable, and so on. Once again, our guests make time fly. Thanks, Elisabetta Biasin, for highlighting laws and privacy in health data management. I wish you a great day. Thank you very much, Davide, and to the VPHI for having me today. It was a great pleasure. And I wish our listeners who are becoming more and more a great day too. If you like this podcast, don't forget to subscribe, vote for it on Spotify, follow VPHI on social media, and tell your friends or colleagues that there's a new cool podcast on the block. Until next time, have a good one.